Hi, my name is Vanessa and I am a nurse with the Massachusetts General Hospital Vascular Center. And today uh, with, with me, I have Wyatt Kelly and Elizabeth Perry. Um, Wyatt is a stroke survivor um, and on uh, the Marathon Teddy's team from the American Stroke Association. And Elizabeth is um, one of the coordinators of the American Stroke Association's uh, Teddy team. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about today is basically what happens after stroke, living a healthy lifestyle, kind of the, the, the process that happens when you've had a stroke or have symptoms of stroke and you get to the hospital, what exactly happens next? So Wyatt, let's, uh, let's talk about your story. All right, let's do it. Good morning. <laughs> Good Thank morning. you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so I had a stroke on Martin Luther King Day, January 17th, 2011. Uh, I was playing basketball at my local gym and uh, everything was going well, minus my poor basketball playing skills. And, uh, you know, missed the layup, and I was going back on defense, and all of a sudden, you know, I started to feel kind of off, um, didn't feel well, felt a little dizzy, um, had a pain in the back of my neck that, you know, had been a problem for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just I took myself right out of the game. I, I couldn't even really tell anybody, like, hey, I need a sub. I just was able to get myself off the court and up against the wall just in time to have my fingers clench up, my tongue swole, uh, and, and the dizziness got worse, and I just kind of slid down and sat on the floor uh, for you know, about five, six minutes until someone came out and go, hey, you know, buddy, you okay? And I, I couldn't really speak very clearly, so I was like, ah, you know. Uh, and they're like, you want us to call 911? I'm like, yeah, I think so. Uh, so paramedics came, and, and they took me, uh, out of the gym to a, a local hospital, and um, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, I'm one of those people that never get sick. You know, I didn't, I didn't even have a primary doctor. I haven't been a doctor in years because I, I never get the snivels, you know, let alone, you know, the flu or all these things that I see people complaining on Facebook about all the time. <laughs> so I had no clue what was going on, and I went into the emergency room, and after a while they gave me some fluid. They thought I may have been dehydrated. Uh, the flu, I think, at the time was going around. I mean, this is January, so um, after a while in the hospital, they were like, okay, you know, you can go now. Uh, you know, maybe swing by the CVS and, and grab some ibuprofen and go see your primary care physician, mm -hmm. which unfortunately I didn't have. Uh, so I went home, and I was in bed for about three days, and I wasn't able to, you know, stand up really. Uh, my speech was, was still impaired. Um, I had that pain in the back of my neck. I couldn't eat. Um, I could barely hold down water. Um, so finally, I, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up down here. So uh, I, I called a friend of mine going, hey, you know, where, where should I go? Is there a minute clinic? Because uh, I didn't have a primary care physician. They, uh, she brought me up to uh, Beverly Hospital and they figured it out pretty quick. Uh, they're like, you don't have the flu. Uh, actually, it looks like you may have had a major stroke. And uh, I didn't know really what that meant at the time because I was, you know, healthy, former collegiate athlete. I played, you know, football at Merrimack College. And as far as I was concerned, I was, in, I was doing pretty well. Um, so they're like, no, we're going we're gonna to send you somewhere uh, where they specialize in this, this type of thing. And I looked at my friend. I'm like, oh, you know, can you give me a ride? And, and, and they're like, no, 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 we've arranged a ride. So, they, you know, I got a nice ambulance ride down from Beverly to, to Mass General. <laughs> And I arrived to a, you know, this, this, you know, like twelve doctors, and all the doctors and nurses and, pay, you know, te you know, student doctors, and uh, so it was a little intimidating, but also it was like, okay, obviously I'm going to be getting some attention here. And uh, for the next week, you know, I was in the hospital, and, and they, you know, told me that I had suffered a major stroke. Um, my type of stroke was a dissection in the, you know, one of the arteries in the back of my head, um, which, you know. I never f learned all the technical terms, but the way it was described to me was, you know, you got a, you got a, you a winter jacket and you got an exterior lining and an interior lining, and there was a hole in between the exterior and interior lining, uh, and that's where the blood clot formed, and um, that's, that's why I had the stroke, playing basketball. And then I also found out, uh, because I didn't go to the doctor before, that I suffered from hypertension, high blood pressure, and uh, so that was a contributing factor, um, but... You know, after a week of, of, you know, I had to hang out in the hospital, too, because, you know, they were like, it's possible that your brain could swell out of your head. And if that's the case, we got to... That sounds scary. 
Yeah, they're like, we gotta, we gotta cut a hole in the back and let it air out for a while. Uh, so we gotta just, you know, you gotta, you gotta hang out here so we can figure that out. So luckily that didn't happen, which is great because I, I just got a new haircut and I, you know, I didn't want to waste that. So um, don't mess the new do. Yeah. So I didn't mess up the new do. And I got, you know, occupational therapy and they helped me kind of figure out, you know, it's, I, I couldn't walk really without assistance. And then I got to a point where I could, um, I had problems speaking. I do still do kind of sometimes, but I'm much better now, um, you know, and, and helped me access more of my vocabulary. Um, and then I was able to go home a week later. So. So this story is incredible um, for many reasons. So if we take it back to even the beginning when you were playing basketball, you know, we talk a lot about um, signs and symptoms of stroke and it being fast, like, you know, the sudden facial weakness, the arm weakness, you know, and speech, and then of course the time to call 911. But for you, you, you had a neck pain, right? Yeah, yeah, there's other, there's other symptoms. You know, that's that acronym, FAST, you know, face drooping, arm weakness, speech impaired, time to call 911, that's, you know, that's the basics and that's the most important to remember. But yeah, my fingers also clenched up, uh, my tongue swole, so I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I had blurry vision. Um, I, I, uh, I couldn't, um, you know, I, I didn't have balance. You know, I, you know, when I was home for three days, you know, to get up to go to the bathroom, I had to get up, hold the wall, and, you know, hold the wall all the way till I got to the bathroom. Yeah. Um, and do the same thing to get back, you know. So this is why the FAST is such a great campaign, but there's, there's also a couple of these other um, sudden symptoms that can occur with a stroke that, you know, I think the American Stroke Association is doing a tremendous job getting the word out on. But you can have these, you know, subtle, uh, different symptoms. And I think one of the biggest things is that if you're not feeling quite right, um, and it seems like what you could do before, you cannot do now, like walk to the bathroom, it's time to call 911 and get yourself to the hospital. Yeah, and even before that, you know, I had had a pain in the back of my neck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a former athlete slash current, you know, I was playing basketball, uh, you know, you, 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 you get hurt and you just play through it. You know, you, you're either hurt or you're injured. And if you're hurt, you keep playing and, you know, go through. And if you're injured, then you sit on the sidelines. But uh, so I just figured I was hurt and I eventually to go away or I'd go get a massage and be fine. I would never have thought that I had, uh, uh, you know, uh, separation in my artery in the back of my head. Of course, if I went to the doctor on the regular and I got my blood pressure taken and I, you know, I probably w could have avoided this, but I, I didn't do that because I was just like, I never get sick. I'm always healthy. This is no big deal. Um, so, you know, I was often as a kid told I was a pain in the neck and I just kind of <laughs> was like, all right, this is karma. Oh man. You know, but it, it was, and maybe it was karma actually, but no, but you know what? Now, now, why is helping everybody out in the community kind of understand that some other symptoms? And when it when it really is something that you should get looked at, either you call nine one one or maybe even it's time to go to your doctor or even get a, a healthcare provider um, that you can kind of see more on the regular to to have you know annual physic, physical physical yeah. checkups. Listen to your own body. You got to be your number one advocate. Obviously, the first time I went to the emergency room, they missed it, and and. Uh, if I had, you know, more presence of mind and pursued this a little bit more, I may not have stayed in bed for three days because I'm extremely lucky. I mean, you know, since I've had my stroke 2011 or 2018, they've made tremendous strides and, and, and yes. there's new technology and there's new discoveries. And one of the things is if they get to the hospital uh, within, what, half an hour, 45 minutes, or they can reverse a lot of the side effects, you know, that you may have and, and, and not only save your life, but also save your quality of life. Yeah. And the fact that I was home for three days uh, after suffering a major stroke and still am able to walk, talk right now mm -hmm. is uh, is pretty incredible, so. It's a great point. And since 2011, uh, th there's been so much done around stroke systems of care, um, especially here in the state of Massachusetts, where community hospitals are much better equipped with identifying the signs of stroke and making sure you get to the hospital or the right hospital as quickly as possible to make sure that you're able to get the treatment that um, can really save your life or um, limit the disabling effects of a stroke. So. You know, thanks for mentioning that, and it, you know, thanks for again for supporting a community and, and getting the research um, 
and we're going to talk about this in a few about you know funds raised by Teddy te Teddy's team, um, getting the, the the science that we need to to take care of patients who are suffering from a stroke and limiting the uh, the disability or possibly even death from it. Um, so you mentioned high blood pressure, which is something that many of us in the community out there have. Um, so when they identified that you had high blood pressure, did you go on medication? Yeah. So you know it's funny. My after I left the hospital, I went right to CVS with my uncle, you know, who was 54 at the time, Teddy Bruski's number, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he goes in to get the medication out and he comes out and he's looking at it and he goes, okay, uh, you got lisinopril for your high blood pressure and you got baby aspirin. Uh, and he's like, this is the same medication I take. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, great, I'm a 29 year old man taking the same medication as my 54 year old uncle. You know, what is what have I come to? But, uh, that's what I had to take. It's, you know, not a big deal. It's, you know, two pills and I still take it every, almost every day. Uh, <laughs> but I remember, uh, I do recommend, you know, if, you know, going and getting one of those pill things that say, you know, Sunday through Saturday, uh, to help you remember. Um, I just got one of those and now I remember to take it every day. So little things like that. I mean, I, when I bought it, I was like, this is for my grandmother, but it's, it's, I got, I, I'm using it and I have to admit I'm using a pill counter daily thing, but it helps. It helps me remember and that's the most important thing. So It's awesome that you came to terms with it. You're using it uh, and guess I, what? You now you're it. taking yeah. your blood pressure pill and your aspirin every day, right? Yeah. And in the event that you needed additional support, you've got Elizabeth that said that she would call you. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I, every morning if you need it. Support network <laughs> is, is key as well. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think that's, you know, one of the biggest things that we can talk about also is, you know, really the, um, the need and the importance for after suffering a stroke, really making sure that you take the medications that um, the healthcare provider prescribed to you, but also, you know, identifying what happens next. So you just had this really big stroke. You get to the hospital and everybody around you is telling you how bad this stroke was. Wow, you're so lucky. Um, you're, you're walking out of the hospital, right? You, you walked out of? Yeah, I walked general? out and drove home. And, Ooh. you know, I don't know if I was, I was supposed to do that, but, you know, I'm looking at my five foot one mother going, you're not driving my SUV home, I'll tell you that much. So much to her dismay, I took the wheel and, and got us home okay. But you got yeah, home okay, which is great. Yeah. I'm sure occupational therapy, who probably saw you in the hospital, would have said something if they were worried about you driving. I think I did get a thumbs up to drive so, home. So, <laughs> so that's like a plus. You can, not recommend it, but you can. So. Yeah. So, you know, you, you fall into this category of stroke survivors where physically you look like you never had a stroke. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but mentally, you were probably going through a lot. So how, how was it kind of surviving the stroke and, and going back into the community. Yeah, so that, that is something that I did not really give the attention to that I probably should have. So I went home and uh, it never, I, I guess it never really hit me what, what happened or how serious it was. And that, you know, which is crazy because I was in the hospital for a, a week, you know, in Boston, which I never really had any issues up until that. So it probably should have I should have given it more attention than I did, but you know, I was like, okay, I can walk now, I can talk, I feel better. Um, I'm itching to get back into the gym and, and you know, uh, get dunked on again, you know. And uh, so I ended up uh, going back to work probably too soon, less than two weeks. Um, I was back back to work, and I I work a couple jobs, so I work daytime and then on weekends at night as well. So. Um, I wish, you know, looking back that I had not done that, that uh, I did not give it the attention that it really deserved. I did not um, really pay attention to my mental health, I guess. Um, and I did, you know, I experienced depression, uh, a lot of anxiety. You know, is this going to happen to me again? I mean, I, I got reassurance. I mean, I got great, great care at MGH and, and uh, the nurses and, and the, the therapists and everything. And I got a primary care physician after that. So I, I, I set up, you know, I got that medical infrastructure in place, but I still was like itching to just get back. Like nothing happened. Like mm -hmm. I'm okay. You know, don't worry about me, you know? And, um, it was difficult. You know, I, I had some, some times where, you know, I was driving back from work and I was alone and I was just like, you know, the, the depression and anxiety was getting at me. So, um, that's something I, I wish I had paid more attention to and, Honestly, I went about five years not really giving it the attention it deserved until um, 
you know, I met Elizabeth and, and you know, because I filled out an application to, you know, to join Teddy's team to run the Boston Marathon. Um, and, and then was, went from only knowing my aunt who had a stroke, the only person in the world I ever met to, you know, to all of a sudden being in a room full of people that had either had strokes or affected by them, had family members, uh, including Teddy Bruschi, mm-hmm. you know, who was someone I watched and envied, you know, as a football player and, and, and just being a Patriots fan. Uh, and then, uh, and then after that also, as you start sharing your story, all the people in my life, whether they're friends or friends of friends or whatever that, that would hear, you know, that, that connection, that network. So, um, that part, you know, if I talked to someone after I first had it, that would have really helped. Um, but also being part of, you know, you know, a community and, and talking about it with friends and family and stuff like that. It, it was also is also extremely important to today. Even though seven years later, you know, it's still really important. Why well, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing that because I think members of the you know healthcare community understand um, the some of these um, you know psychosocial mental effects of a stroke. Just being really overwhelmed, especially with our young stroke survivors. You know, when when you don't have a physical disability after your stroke. Others in the community think you're totally fine and not, it's like nothing happened. And sometimes we can even, you know, uh, your, your friend might even say, you look great. You don't even look like you had a stroke. Um, here, do this project for me. <laughs> and, and at the time, it's still such a major event that your body went through that, you know, we, we don't take into, effect, in, into account um, how significant and overwhelming and anxiety causing um, a stroke can really be. And we hear it a lot from our stroke survivors that this is a really tough period in their life, you know, right after their stroke. They try and go back to work and sometimes they're just very overwhelmed or the, there's a light sensitivity. Um, that coping with, with the effects afterwards can just be really hard. Yeah, I remember right after, because um, I, I grew up actually in Vermont and, uh, you know, working up in the you know, mountains of Killington and Okemo and out in the freezing mm-hmm. cold. I love the cold weather. I'm one of those people that loves the cold weather. I'm not like a lot of the rest of you New Englanders who complains <laughs> about the weather all the time. I, I embrace it. I like it. And and I remember, two, you know, because I had my stroke in January, and for about a month after, I was extremely weather sensitive, and, and the cold got to me, and I and I got so angry because I'm like, I, I felt like it was one of my superpowers. When everybody else complained about how cold it was, and I'd be out there in a t-shirt going, I, I'm... I'm happy in this 25 degree weather. You were this wearing shorts in the winter, weren't you? Yeah, well, not well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, but but then I lost that, and I was like, it, it, you know, which is again ridiculous, like a side effect that I'm like upset about. Like I can, I'm gonna have to wear a sweater now in the winter, you know. But uh, that was the thing, and it went away, and now I'm back to, you know, my cool self in the in the winter, feeling good. But um, there were things that 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 took a while. For, for me to, to, to heal, and, and I didn't really give it the attention that it deserved, and I wish it hadn't, and it probably would help me recover a lot quicker. I mean, not just physically, but, but mentally, so. Well, you're putting a list together right now during the segment of how you're helping others and just sharing your story, so thank you for letting us know. Um, let's talk a little bit about Teddy's team and running the marathon. Um, Am I allowed to say I'm running? Yeah, why would you? Yeah. Okay, well, sometimes I gotta walk a few times, so I don't know. Oh That's my still, goodness. Still, you yes. finish and you get that medal, man. You you are a marathoner. Doesn't matter how you finish <laughs> true, as long true. as you finish. True. Remember that. <laughs> so for us, um, Teddy's team started 13 years ago. Uh, Teddy Bruski and his wife Heidi came to the American Heart and Stroke Association and said that they wanted to partner. Um, many of you probably know in 2005, Teddy had a stroke um, right after he won a Super Bowl. He did not know he was having a stroke, and so that was one of the main pieces and focus of Teddy's team was to really get the warning signs out so people knew that they were having them. And as we've started to do that, there have become other warning signs, as we've previously talked about, that we are working on getting those signs out as well. And so um, Heidi and Teddy really wanted 
Teddy's team to be a support network. So exactly the benefits that you're getting from it is exactly what Teddy and Heidi started it for. And so they really wanted it to be a support network for not only survivors, but also caregivers as well. And um, 13 years later, I think we've definitely succeeded in that. But we've also succeeded in raising almost five million dollars um, for stroke research awareness and education. Very impressive. Thanks to really great uh, teammates that we have um, in Wyatt and in our over thirteen hundred alumni that we have, um, you included. Um, so, <laughs> so we can thank you guys for all of the great work that you've been doing. But um, you know, we have thirty nine runners on our team this year for Boston. Um, all are, um, are so excited and have been doing such a great job, not only fundraising, but getting our mission out. And um, for me, it's really fantastic because I get to hear stories like Wyatt's where, you know, Teddy's team really kind of helped him. It really, he, he met other stroke survivors. He, he realized he was relatable and that he wasn't alone. And so for me, that's the best thing. Um, you know, that I get to do every day is to kind of help that. Um, but that was the main focus of what Teddy and Heidi wanted to do back in 2005. Oh, I love hearing that story, it, 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 mainly because there's just, it, this, is a, this is a group from an organization that just does so much. You know, you, you really, sometimes you think about, oh, well, where does my money go when I donate to Wyatt for the marathon? And it's just, it, this, this whole initiative is just priceless when you think about how this can affect um, not only folks who have not um, had a stroke, but preventing stroke in the future for so many, for being um, such a source of support for stroke survivors. Mm -hmm. And thank you for mentioning caregivers as well, who really have to go through their own journey during this re during recovery, and even the, the the scariest part when you actually have this stroke. You know, but it it can be incredibly hard on on um, the caregivers or, or loved ones and friends that are. Um, are with are with that person um, at their you know most uh, desperate um, point. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Teddy's team can really contribute to so many, um, and you know in, in my my nurse world at the MGH, knowing that we you know receive research funding from the American Heart and Stroke Association to go into research that could ultimately save um, you know a, a, a person's life or, or limit the disabling causes um, or you know sequelae of a stroke um, is is just tremendous. So it's it's super exciting to talk about, and I'm super excited for you why running the marathon, um, you know, on Monday. This is going to air for Stroke Month in May, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just such a great initiative. But you don't just have to run a marathon, right? There's other yes. um, things that you can do within Teddy's team. Yes. And so maybe, maybe walking might be one. Walking. Yeah, definitely definitely yeah. walk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could always walk the Boston Marathon if you really wanted to, but we do have a lot of other events. We participate in the Falmouth Road Race, which happens every August. Um, we um, have a great relationship with the Falmouth Road Race. We do travel races every year as well. So Falmouth is seven miles, so significantly less mileage than Boston. Yeah, um, seven, 26.2. And you're staying in a town. Like for the marathon, yeah. you're running you're through many towns. <laughs> yes. This yeah. is just one town. You this get is to one stay town. Yeah, passport stamps on this Wonderful. No. That's okay. Yes. <laughs> and then each year we choose a different kind of destination to go to. We've um, We've done Kentucky, we've done Vegas, we have Kona, Hawaii coming up in June. We have the Disney World Wine and Dine coming up in um, November. So we've got a lot of great opportunities. Uh, outside of running, Teddy's team last year started actually, um, myself and another runner that ran Boston last year started it as a fundraiser and it was really well received and Teddy loved it. So we do a celebrity touch football mm -hmm. game that takes place in my hometown um, in Rhode Island. And um, we have that coming up in the end of May, uh, May 22nd. So you can come and kind of see retired and current New England Patriots players play with, um, with some of local celebrities down in Rhode Island as well. So it's a really great opportunity to give back and not have to run. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but outside of attending an event and also running an event, we are always looking for volunteers throughout the year for everything that we do. We need volunteers to help give water out at the long runs for our, our training team. We need mm -hmm. people to share along the route. And that's usually in Boston, right? 
Yes, yeah, that's usually yeah. for Boston. So it's really all winter. Um, and then we need people to help chair them out along the race route as well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things internally within the office that we need help on as well. So um, if somebody's out there that wants to volunteer, please, you know, let us know. We'd be more than happy to have you. Have you had any Chelsea community folks running or volunteering for any of these Teddy's team initiatives? Not to my knowledge. So oh, I'd really love Chelsea, some. Chelsea, step up. Come on, Chelsea, come on. Where are you at? Call to action. <laughs> well, that's great. I think it's... Um, a, a super exciting time for Teddy's team as you continue to grow over 13 years to um, the group that you are now. Uh, and thank you so much for for helping to you know expand and, and grow the team and be more successful every year, um, really. So we have more wonderful stories like Wyatt's to share, and and you know this is a great um, way to get the information on stroke out to the community and really have folks who've been affected by stroke really tell their story. I think it's a really great point that you mentioned, both of you mentioned, to be your own advocate. And really when something is not right and you really feel truthfully in your heart that I need help, that, that you go and seek it out as soon as, as possible. Yeah, I think, you know, key takeaways are listen to your own body and if, you know, you're not satisfied with the answer that you're getting, then, then pursue it until you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, Two, you got to remember the acronym FAST. So, you know, I run the marathon slow, but FAST <laughs> is what you want to remember. And that stands for, you know, face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, and the T just stands for time to call 911. And, you know, don't try to walk to the hospital on your own because you're not going to make it. Don't, you know, try to, you know, get a buddy to give you a ride. Just call 911 and, and, and go and get looked at. Um, and lastly, you know, you don't have to run a marathon. You know, first of all, I'm not a runner. I don't even like running. I, I don't really understand why people enjoy it. I think there may be something wrong with them, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, but I, I personally don't enjoy running, but I enjoy being a part of this team and this community and, and helping spread the word to, so people don't have to go through what I did. Uh, but you don't have to run a marathon. You don't have to, you know, go, you know, climb a mountain or, or whatever. You, you can do something as simple as, as 30 minutes of exercise a day, like going out and, and just walking. That, that's how I started, actually. I started half an hour every morning going out for a walk around my neighborhood. I live right up the street in Malden. Um, and I just walk around the neighborhood. And that, Get your heart rate up. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. 30 minutes a day. And mm -hmm. then you can build up to something else. But that's it. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to, like, oh, my God, i got to run a marathon. Just just do something and, and then build your way up to something else. But but that's that's the main takeaway, I think. Yeah. Right? And lessons learned too, taking your medications. Got to do that, yep. Making sure you take your medication. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's such a, I know a, a lot of guys who are, for some reason, healthy guys don't want to go to the doctor on, on an annual. Mm -hmm. I didn't go. Yeah. But now I do. So now it's it's worth it yeah. um, to, to have a, a primary care provider, whether it be a nurse practitioner, a physician, a physician's assistant who can see you annually and really just check out how you're doing overall. Is your blood pressure okay? Run some blood tests. Make sure you, the risk factors like high high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, physical inactivity, you know, um, even a family history of um, heart disease or stroke. All those things can be talked about at your healthcare provider um, visit um, when you go annually. Uh, and that could be a really key piece of mm -hmm. reducing um, your risk of stroke in the future. So um, it's a great point. Uh, that we want to make sure that the community listens to, um, to, to get out there and, and make sure you have your own um, health care provider and be your best advocate for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we've convinced you to be a member of, uh, a or a prospective member of Teddy's team in the near future. There's plenty of great events and plenty of great ways to volunteer to really make an impact on the community. Um, thank you so much for being here today. For me. Really good us. luck to both of you on Marathon <laughs> Monday and to thank the rest you. of Teddy's team. I'm sure you're going to do so well and it's going to be so well deserved to get that marathon medal around your neck. So congratulations again Thank and thanks you. for watching.